Hello, everyone. I'm Jeremy McGovern, Executive Editor with American Ferry <laughs> Journal, and want to welcome you to this discussion about our International Hoof Care Summit Virtual Clinic Series. Of course, the International Hoof Care Summit in Cincinnati for 2021 had to be postponed as a live event in Cincinnati. So instead, we're offering you this eight-month program of hoof care education, on-demand education to watch at your leisure. Uh, our first Subject is the month of February with therapeutic shoeing, and uh, our friend Travis Burns is joining us. Hi, Travis. Hi, Jeremy. How are you? Great, great. Thanks so, for having me. Yeah, absolutely. And so we have a couple of lectures from Travis this year, and uh, or in this series. And what we're doing with the month of February is Travis is going to do a presentation on hospital plates, you know, and therapeutic shoeing. Creativity is a must, and I think what we'll see with Travis's presentation, that's certainly true with hospital plates. Can you tell us a little bit about what you'll talk about, Travis? Sure. So we're going to give a, a brief presentation talking about the, the application uh, of hospital plates and incorporating them into your, your practice and then go through how to make two of the most common variations that, that I utilize or we utilize here. Um, so not only will we cover how to, how to make them and how to apply them, but also review some of the, the common indications or the cases in which you may choose to use a hospital plate for. And then at the end, we'll, we'll talk about some tips and tricks and maybe some, some things that you could do with a hospital plate and some pads that they maybe hadn't thought of before. Travis, uh, one of the ways we might use a hospital plate, it might require the owner to have access to the solar surface. Do you have a preference for a hospital plate type, make it a little easier for the, the client? Um, yeah. So when you, we have clients, uh, you know, that are maybe elderly or, or maybe an uncooperative horse, obviously the, the most traditional hospital plate is usually a four bolt system, but oftentimes if, if the owner or the, the team treating them have difficulty with all four of those bolts, uh, we can use, uh, what's called a Farley plate, um, developed by our, our friend Dave Farley, um, which is just a, a one bolt system. So there's simply one bolt that you have to remove at the time and then a tongue, uh, portion of the plate that slides into the shoe to secure it in the in the front half. So it's a nice, easy, easy to remove plate. And of course, uh, I should mention Travis is the the chief farrier at Virginia Maryland College of Veterinary Medicine. Uh, so I'm sure you're seeing a lot of cases there. But you've also, uh, you know, have had a practice that didn't have all the accessibility of tools and and uh, supplies that you now have at the veterinary school. Uh, you know, for someone starting out, maybe doesn't have a big budget or not a lot of tools, uh, what advice do you have if they need to fabricate a hospital plate? Um, yeah, so so when fabricating a, a hospital plate, some of the, the easiest ways to, to do it with the least amount of materials uh, would be to use bolts that are, are threaded for 3 8 inch coarse thread. So that'll match the holes that you commonly drill and tap. So using a 5 16 inch drill bit and then a 3 8 inch uh, tap. Um, that's what we thread stud holes with every day. So that makes it very easy. That's usually already in every farrier's truck. And then if you just make a, a traditional four bolt system using a, an aluminum plate, um, that's easily readily available from, from just about anywhere and uh, fairly easy to cut. And so even if you don't have a bandsaw or a jigsaw available, so obviously I would say the bandsaw is the easiest way, but if you don't have that, a jigsaw and have the plate in the vise makes it really easy to cut. And then ultimately, even if you don't have power or don't have the, the jigsaw available, um, then using a, a cold cut or a hot cut and, or even a fuller, if that's all you have, and just cut uh, the aluminum plate out to remove the excess. And then you bolt it together. And, uh, you know, obviously a grinder makes life real easy to move all the, remove all the excess, um, but you can do it again with a vice and a, and a hot rasp. So it's, you can make a hospital plate out of, you know, really just all the tools that are already in a fair truck, or you can add some specialty tools to your fair truck to make, making them just a little bit easier. But if you're just making your, your first one or, or, or a first couple, you know, go ahead and just make them with what you have available and then use the money you made from, from using those to buy some stuff that'll make your life easier. Sure. And of course you, you mentioned the four bolt, you mentioned the Farley, uh, you're going to show us some tricks and tips on maybe some different ideas. So there's a lot of ways to skin skin a cat when it comes to hospital plates. Mm -hmm. Through your experiences, have you found uh, one area to not overlook, uh, even with the variety of hospital plates, where you might might end up with a, a failure? 
Um, some of the places where, where the hospital plates fail are really, um, the biggest one is just when the holes don't line up very easily for the person to be able to take them on and off. So if, um, you know, if it's the holes don't line up from the plate to the shoe, or if the, the threads are, are kind of off or, or stripped, um, it makes it very difficult to get it on. So some of the things that you really want to focus on are to make sure the, the holes in the shoe and the plate line up. So oftentimes we'll clamp the, the shoe and the plate together to drill those holes. Um, and then I do on most of the plates, drill the hole into the plate slightly bigger than the bolt we're going to use. So there's a little bit of play into it. And then countersinking the holes into the shoe um, before you before you tap it, um, make life a little bit easier for the person who's putting in the bolt. If you have a countersunk area, it will push the bolt and kind of push it into to where the hole needs to be. But it's really important to, to make sure your holes are drilled perpendicular to the plate in the shoe, that it's tapped perpendicular to the straight uh, to the uh, shoe, and then drill a slightly larger hole in the in the plate to allow for some tolerance, some movement. And then just make sure if you're if you're using an aluminum shoe for your hospital plate, just make sure you you the owner understands that aluminum threads are are very easy to cross that or or strip. So make sure that they don't over tighten it. So it should just be tightened until you know tighten it all the way with your fingers, and then like a quarter turn with the with a socket wrench is really all you need to do. But obviously, in aluminum shoes, the the thread holes are easier to strip or or cross thread than they are in steel. Great. So most commonly I'll choose a, a steel shoe for this. Awesome. Awesome. Well, thank you, Travis. And, you know, I, I think uh, whether you've made one or 1,000, this will be a good session to watch some useful material. And as you said, it'll make your life easier. So, again, thank you, Travis, for helping Great. us out. Nope. Thank you, guys. Thank you all.